Let's do this, guys. You ready? Let's, Let's talk it. a little bit about Puff Daddy. Now, I think we mm. all know Biggie's better than Tupac, right? I mean, we can all agree on that, right? No, but okay, go ahead. He always disagreed. But uh, Nico, you were Biggie over Tupac, right? Yeah, Biggie over Tupac, 100%. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, hey, I, Tupac I mean, was a Tupac went to great. acting school. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, nah, nah. Tupac was great, but I mean, all that stuff that happened was really, really crazy. I mean, it was it was nuts. The fact that people would say, you know, Biggie versus Tupac and then their lives were lost and all these things were going on. Uh, but one person stayed alive through the whole thing. One person never spent a day in jail, and that is Puff Daddy. Uh, and, and recently, these Puff Daddy re re revelations or revelations, excuse me, revelations have been coming to to fruition. And, you sure you didn't start that tequila already? Yeah, I know. I want to start. To, I got a little rum in my coffee. But then all this information that's been coming out on Puff Daddy is kind of crazy because he's been emulating what a lot of other music moguls have been doing. And really, when I tell you the truth, when you look at this stuff, when you start going on down the, you know, the family tree of the Epsteins and you start looking at Ghislaine and you understand Robert Maxwell, who's who Robert Maxwell was, his relationship with the Mossad, uh, it, it's very hard to avoid and see that there's a pattern going on. And the same thing is going on with Puff Daddy. Uh and I like to talk about it really quick. Let's put up the 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 uh, the tweet that I had. And here was the first question I asked you guys. And this is something I'm probably might be fresh to you. I don't know if you guys have gone into this a little bit, but is Puff Daddy going to be Epstein by the elite, or is he going to be protected by the elite? Now, when I say protected, there is a chance that Puff Daddy has videos and footage of some of the elites or their friends, and he's holding that over their head so they won't kill him. Remember, they raided just recently, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, they just raided Puff Daddy's Miami house, New York house, and Los Angeles house at the same time. Boom. I mean, that takes a lot of money, a lot of resources, and a lot of shit to make that happen, right? But they raided those houses at the same time. Puff Daddy's out. Um, but the accusations are still out there. And some of the accusations that have been now brought to the forefront are really scary. Uh, everything you saw with the Epstein kind of scandal, people being drugged, people's holy of holy not uh, being able to be held tight, if that makes any sense. Cat Williams on the Shannon Sharp show, uh, was it the Shay Shay Lounge? Talked uh, about it. Shay. Yeah, he mentioned that he threw it out there, a little, little snippet, like if you want to keep that holiest of holiest one night, you got to say no to Puff Daddy. And there's been times when public where you see like kind of Mike Tyson making sure that he kind of straightened out and took Puff Daddy's hand away from him and moved off to the side and say, no, no, no. Uh, accusations by 50 Cent saying certain stuff like Puff Daddy told him that he wanted to take him shopping, that he would pay for it. Uh, and all these accusations swirling around there. Let's show the tweet real quick just to see where we're at. So what do you guys think, first of all, just first, before even diving into it, Fee, do you think he's going to be Epstein by the elite or do you think he's going to be protected by the elite i mean i don't know because i honestly have uh been lightly watching and following this because there's just been so much going on foreign policy wise that i'm just like oh god another sex trafficking thing i was more so following the uh the other thing with the nickelodeon uh pedo uh, guy who's yeah. a super zionist and like how Amanda Bynes tried to warn people a long time ago and you know how she really just completely, they derailed her entire career. And so this is just more of that. And I see these people as getting away. However, I always go back to, they always tend to punish the, the, the black men more <laughs> from what I've seen. I mean, you look at uh, what's his name, Bill Cosby. He got, he got way more than anybody else. And, I think that if anybody is in danger of being, you know, thrown out, it could be Puff Daddy. However, I think he's been he's been protected to a certain degree um, because he, he his following the the interconnections that are there involves so many different people that I think I if they don't protect him, they're going to have to get rid of him. And I think that the people running the show are are more of the Epstein's and the Harvey. Harvey Weinstein's of the sort and not to go all crazy on that, but that's the reality. If you know what I mean, it, it, it's funny. And Nico, we'll get your opinion in one second. But when we were doing this, I remember um, the Duran following the Epstein uh, situation. And, you know, uh, I think it's Christopher Alexander Christopher, the, the guy from Cyprus 
<clears throat> he had made a comment that's very similar to mine where this is like almost everything. This is like the top of the food chain. This is so, so important. And I remember Fee was like, yeah, it's important, but it's not like the most important thing. But these are the people who are tied to the globalists who are calling a lot of shots. And listen, I get it that, you know, obviously Puff Daddy being black, you know, he might be more on the chop and block than an Epstein or uh, a David Geffen who we're going to sp speak about or a Clive Davis. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain to you who these people are. Um, but Puff Daddy has done some stuff just recently, Nico, that no uh, most white men wouldn't be able to get away with. First of all, most white men in America wouldn't be able to obtain this because Puff Daddy was chosen at one point to, to work with the oligarchs, to be one of them. So what are your thoughts on this so far when you look at this initially as far as him being protected by the elite or Epstein by the elite? So I, I don't know. I would have to probably disagree with you saying that like a white man would be, wouldn't be able to get away with some of the stuff that Diddy's in. Nah, because right now we know for a fact that Diddy wasn't throwing parties for his goddamn self. <laughs> right? And yet it's Diddy that's coming out. They're putting Diddy out there as if there weren't record executives that are there. Like there weren't A&Rs at these parties. And not not for nothing, but we know that uh, for those of you who don't know, most of the record executives at ANRs are also coincidentally Zionists, which is super oh, coincidental. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like no, nah, they would have been able to get away with some yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like if they weren't able to get away with it, then why is it only Diddy's house being raided? <laughs> like, so logically speak, and why is it like it's it's how long did it take for Harvey Weinstein? For, for us to catch him and like look at all the circumstances that had to fall into place. And even still, they tried to protect him afterwards, which we're not really seeing from P. Diddy. I can't remember which uh, which artist said it, but they were like, what happened? Why aren't all the people who were uh, uh, attending these parties, friends with Diddy, why aren't they coming out and defending him? Right? Hell, at least Harvey Weinstein had people come out and defend him, but they're not even defending. It's like he's kind of being thrown... Uh, to the lambs. I don't believe that he'll be Epstein, though. I think that the, the Diddy was the conduit of hip hop culture for that Epstein class, right? In That's the same way, way that it. they, it seems to me that the same way that they use Epstein uh, to blackmail all those politicians, the same way that they use Diddy to blackmail hip hop artists, A and R's, record executives, and even some politicians, like in the video I just sent in the private chat, um, like. In, some politics, like I said, some politicians were even blackmailed. <clears throat> and we know that when it comes to controlling the masses, pop culture is just as important as politics. And you can make an argument even, hip hop culture specifically is even more important than pop culture when it comes to controlling the masses. Uh, hip hop culture has always had this tendency to, to push the Overton window one way or the other. And Diddy has kind of set the standard uh, of what is what behavior is is and is not acceptable when it comes to how we treat those artists, right? What they do and what they don't have to do in order to be accepted. Like, bro, y'all 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 see what happened with uh? I don't know if y'all seen that video of him and Justin Bieber. Yeah, man, like I do adopted Justin Bieber, uh, and you know we gonna do all this fun stuff with him and Justin Bieber's best friend. Like it's a yep. fifteen year old's dream. We can't really say on camera. What the fuck? What are you doing with fifteen year old that you can't say on camera? Yep. Yep. Right. He adopted, uh, Usher, uh, he adopted, went, he adopted right? Usher too. Usher. So like, yeah. Usher went and lived with him. Howard Stern interview. You're absolutely right, Nico. Usher at the age of 14 lived with P. Diddy for a year. I mean, that's some creepy ass shit. Please and specifically continue. with the goal of telling him, like, showing him what the life was going to be like. When yeah. He became, <laughs> what the, f what, why would a 14 year old need to see that, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let here's the thing I would argue too as well, Nico. Too, it's just that they're all a protected class. I didn't mean you know you're you're absolutely right because we're going to talk about David Geffen. We're going to talk about Clive Davis. These two particular people they almost mirror what Puff Daddy is doing, and these are a protected class. And you said something that's so important right here. You know, you talk about bread and circuses, right? You give them bread and circuses, and they'll never revolt. This is modern day bread and circuses, the entertainment industry, the sports industry. And it is much more powerful than politics alone. I mean, we're sitting here messing with the low hanging fruit. It's such a small amount of people that are even involved in politics in the United States, but everybody's involved in entertainment. Everybody's got Netflix, everybody's watching their stuff. So there's more control. I mean, look at the Swifties, right? She fills yeah. a whole stadium full of people and she's telling people go vote Democrat by vote Biden. And people don't know what's going on. So they're going to listen to her. So and, they have and politicians low key want to be celebrities, yeah. which is why they ingratiate themselves with people like P. Diddy because they want to run in those circles because a lot of them, like you always say, 
pasta. Most politicians, most politicians are just failed actors. Yeah. Right. So they, they, a lot of them want to be in those circles. So they're willing to do whatever they have to, 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 to get in them. And P. Diddy seems to be one of those guys, man. You know, he was right there. Whenever Obama got shot up to fame, P. Diddy was right there. Well, you know what? The whole thing is, is that when it came to the whole Biggie Smalls, uh, Puff Daddy, uh, Tupac situation, Look, I was you never- You calling this grown man daddy. You can call him Diddy, damn it. Sean Cole. Pasta. Sean Stop. It's not Sean. the 90s anymore. You're Sean. a grown man. We ain't gonna call no grown man daddy. His name is Diddy. <laughs> I mean, he went with the name Puff Daddy. It's not me. <laughs> yeah, in the 90s, Diddy, he changed Diddy. that a long time ago. All right. He, even Cole. his weird ass knew that All it was right. weird for grown men to call him daddy. But here's the thing, guys. <laughs> Your opinion, when and you know, and I can tell you this right now. When I used to hear the accusations that Tupac was gunned down from Biggie and Puff Daddy, I never believed it. From really? P Diddy, sorry, from, yeah, from Sean. Combs. I never believed that Sean Combs had anything to do with it. I thought it was an isolated oh. incident. I thought it oh, was. No, I, I really did. I mean, I thought it was a lot to do with the woman, the girl he raped, the, the blood. The brother that was going after him, the fight he had at the casino. I thought it was an isolated. Yeah, Tupac it, was a little, on a little bit of a bender when he got killed, so it's like it makes yeah. sense. Like, yeah, I can see that. But 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 you know when when, when it came to Biggie Smalls, I thought it was all Suge Knight ordering the, the hit. Like, obviously the evidence right. was right there. But just recently on a new documentary calling "Surviving Puff Daddy," these guys uh, incriminated themselves, and all of a sudden were arrested. And brought back in for what they said on the video, and the 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 Nevada police wanted to, to to ask more questions and know more about the whole situation, because these guys had said that pretty much that Puff Daddy or P Diddy, Sean Combs, offered a million dollars to have him whacked, gave it to one particular guy to give to the other guy, but that guy never gave it to those guys, so that shielded them. But now this door was kind of opened up, and the more you looked at you know the history of Sean Combs. Uh, his 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 ex girlfriend showing up dead, the coroner hiding the reports for weeks, and then all of a sudden it comes back she has pneumonia or something, very suspicious. Uh, Cassie with this lawsuit, uh, who was a performer supposedly, and I don't know how much choice uh, Sean Combs had to make this, or if it was his superior saying let's just make her go away and shut up. Less than twenty four hours, a thirty million dollar lawsuit. The stuff she talks about makes you go wait a second. Maybe Sean Combs was that crazy guy out there. Maybe he was the one who had Tupac whacked. Who knows? <laughs> that's been his personality, though. Like, that's what's crazy. Like, I don't, at least people that I know that have been, you know, because hip hop, Diddy's just kind of always been there, mostly known for like making people famous and then screwing them over. That's basically what he's been known for since uh, Biggie died. Yeah. Um, which I, at that point would actually follow a pattern. Like you don't really make it past three albums with Diddy. You you might get you're lucky if you get two with Diddy. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna rob you the whole time. Craig but, Mack. He told yeah, him. Craig I mean, Mack refused to change his manager. If you don't know who Craig Mack is, fam, that's flavor in your ear. Okay. You heard uh, that song. Everybody knows that song. Remember the Pussycat Dolls? Everybody forgot about the Pussycat Dolls. Uh, Craig Mack with the situation though, really quickly, just so the audience knows. Uh, Sean Combs told him he had to change his manager. Craig Mack refused to change his manager. It was just a childhood friend. Didn't want to do it. Uh, P. Diddy refused to release his last album. Never released his last album on yeah. Bad Boy. He had yeah. that power. He had that strength. And that's when you hear a lot of the talks about him being a control freak. Him, you know, just going over the top. Let's take a look at these allegations. This is from The Independent. It says, what are the allegations made against Sean Diddy Combs? We got this up. Independent Jamie. Is Jamie there? Jamie. All right, let me get it up. I think you're the one that's echoey, Pasta, by the way. I yelled, I screamed there. Okay, so this is the, the, I'm going to check my audio. My audio is working. Yeah. Uh, what are the allegations made against Sean Diddy Combs? And we're going to go just down here a little bit. They, like it says, they raided all his houses together, right? He's 54 years old. He denies all the allegations against him. Um, 
So here it is. The new lawsuits came months after Combs' former partner, Cassandra Cassa, Cassie Ventura, filed a lawsuit against him in November. She accused him of raping her in 2018, beating her, demanding she carry a firearm to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, and forcing her into unwanted sexual encounters with male sex workers. Ms. Ventura's lawsuit against Combs was settled the day after she filed it for an undisclosed amount of money. We later on heard it was $30 million. The slew of allegations in the lawsuits against Combs date uh, as far back as the 1990s when he founded his own record label, Bad Boy Records. Um, all the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs' lawsuits against the rappers began in November 16th, 2023, when he was sued by singer and dancer Cassie, his former partner who alleged uh, years of abuse. It was filed under the New York Adult survivors act just before it expired the act uh, offered a one-year window for adult victims of sexual assaults to come forward with civil claims regardless of the statute of limitations and they were just more of the same and and this happened and you can see right down below when he signed her in the label when she was 19 he was 37 and a lot of this stuff went on and there were talks other more talks about stuff she going was 19 on when that happened What's that? I always forget when she made that damn song. She was like a kid. 19. 19 years old, forced to have sex with other people, completely controlled by, by Diddy. I think her name was Porter, right? I don't, I don't. It's not Katie Porter, but I forgot her oh, name. Oh, I thought you were talking about Cassie. I was like, well, Cassie well, is one. Porter was the other, his old girlfriend for years and years and years who ended up dead. She had accused Puff Daddy of the same allegations, abuse, uh, having to have sex with other male partners. There were talks at his party that, you know, people would have the drugs. And this is very similar to what what uh, happened with Epstein, right? They get their little sip of something. Next thing you know, they're passed out. This is stuff that Cat Williams has insinuated, stuff that kind of uh, Exhibit did. It. They were trying to push Exhibit in another interview to talk about it. He didn't want to talk about it. But he sent talked about it. A lot of people have talked about it. There have been people talking that they've seen people like Al B. Shore, another a label signed to the another gentleman signed to the bad boy label, that he was caught by a secretary giving Sean Puff Daddy some love. And when I mean love, on your hands and knees love. So this oh, stuff is whoa. going on. And supposedly no the accusations were that when he was caught by the person, one of the secretaries, he had told the secretary, looked in the eyes and says, this is about power. So it's about emasculating that person, right? Forcing them to do that stuff. It's not even about, you know, sometimes about sexuality. It's about making sure that person knows who is. There are other idiot. ways to to display your power than getting your dick sucked by another guy. Like that's something that a dog does. I hear you. I hear like you. Literally a dog. <laughs> like, hey, it's like you can call it what you want to, Diddy, but you're gay. Like I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Whatever helps you sleep at night. It sounds sounds like a great quote for when you get caught and outed. But well, he if you sucked watch a dick. The movie, your, your penis was in his mouth. Yeah. If you watch, and the he movie, was stroking it. Surviving Puff Daddy. It will tell you about it. Now, this person in particular, there's no direct links that I have yet tying David Geffen to Puff Daddy or P Diddy. But David Geffen was very close with Clive Davis. In fact, at one point, David Geffen was trying to be partners with uh clive davis back in the days the clive mean davis business partners industry. go ahead buddy you mean business partners business partners oh okay. yeah, yeah I mean, once again, both, record Diddy, so. yeah. both in the industry i mean these people are the elitist of elites and the funny thing is nico i think it's the fact that they have to come up and do this kind of duties for the elite but they're also their own monster inside they got their own wants their own desires and i think the industry or the elites have to watch them to make sure they don't get too far out of whack and that's what i think happened with puff daddy is this just got so power hungry never touched never arrested puff daddy at certain times made uh, investigations disappear in new york right so that just yeah. shows you how much power yeah, and it's in the movie Surviving uh, Puff Daddy, and people should watch that movie because it will give you a little history of how he got started, how it happened to Bad Boy, the connections, Clive Davis, the whole nine yards. But you can see this picture right here. If you can move up and just show more of the picture, of course, David Geffen is right there in the middle. And, of course, there's Oprah Winfrey. That's it. Just show the picture. There you go. Uh, now, David Geffen well, has had almost— Madonna plastic surgery. Good God. <laughs> David Geffen is known, and there was accusations about David, and David's never had to spend any time in jail, right? I don't know if his houses were raided, Nico, and stuff, but he had almost the same exact accusations as, 
you Puff Daddy did, right? So David Geffen started with William Morris back in the days. He faked that he went to college in UCLA and got a job with William Morris. And supposedly the stories about David Geffen and Clive Davis are both the same thing with Puff Daddy. They come from poor areas. Now, P. Diddy did go to like the, you know, he didn't have the life of a Tupac and Biggie Smalls where he had to go to street school in the streets of Bethesda Stuyvesant in poor areas. He was actually moved out to the Pop went to school of, yeah. of arts in, in Maryland. Let's, yes. let's relax. Let's he, relax. he had a little bit better of life, but supposedly that was when his mom single got out of the military, moved him there and did what she had to do. But all these guys are supposedly are like supposedly self-made. Like they made it. It was by chance. They weren't chosen. They weren't picked. And that's the crazy thing about it. Go to the next article we have up there. Just to give you a little insight to David Geffen, he's a music mogul. He was pretty much accused of ruining Donna Summer's career at one point. Oh, don't tell me that. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Oh, this, my mama. He, once again, he didn't play ball. She didn't play ball. So he ruined her. Kind of like what Puff Daddy did to Craig Mack. Ended his career. Uh, wait, no, leave the title up there. Leave the titles. Leave the title up there so I can read it. Found the exclusive man at the heart of the Hollywood sex abuse scandal. Elusive. Yes. And, and David, like I said, he, he was once hurt. They, they Supposedly, somebody testified that David Geffen told his boy toys. And he, he's openly gay, but he would have all these boy toys. And it took a while for him to admit it. And he would tell them, I'll have you killed. You know, he would tell his, his the bodyguards have no problem putting you in a ditch and killing you. Uh, and also, you know, what I'm saying a actors ending up dead. Uh, same situation with Clive Davis. There were rape allegations against David Geffen. Uh, these are another music moguls. And like I said, the connections between David, David Geffen and Clive Davis. And I'm, I think we're going to have to keep an eye and see if more information comes out. But it's almost identical, guys, where you see these music moguls, the same behavior, same things. Same, you know, parties holding sex tapes over people. So it's just crazy. The industry itself kind of, you know, produces these type of characters. I don't, it, it's, I mean, it's crazy, but it's also like, it's kind of like we kind of should have saw it coming, right? Okay, so you remember the whole, the, the joke, it was almost like one of the first memes of the music industry is that for whatever reason, despite Diddy not actually being the artist, he was always in the front of his videos for his artists. Like always putting himself out there. He was primarily conduct, like if they wanted to interview B Biggie, they damn sure was gonna have to talk to Pub Daddy, to P Diddy too. Like he was like just kind of putting his face out there in a way that a manager or an A&R representative would never do. Uh, in the same way, like you see they'll, they'll make, uh, like kind of like how Elon Musk does right now with X actually. Yeah. Like he makes it about him and it's almost as if Biggie was just a conduit for Puffy to be who he became. And that was always the goal. And yeah. even though after, after uh, um, Biggie died, he tried to make all these songs about him and, oh, you know, my heart broken by Diddy, which is, which is in my opinion, was probably you. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there was a point where Biggie, it was never supposed to be, in my opinion, it was never supposed to be Biggie getting bigger than P. Diddy in the Bad Boy label. It was never supposed to be that. It was yeah. always supposed to be Bad Boy or Diddy, Bad Boy in the artist. And yeah. Biggie was becoming a legend in and of himself, which would present a problem, especially at a time where uh, like Diddy didn't have, it isn't like now where Bad Boy is firmly in his control, you know, for the most part. The artist can't really challenge him because of how much time he's put in and the money he has. Back then, their, their bank accounts were competing. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Is, yeah, so, there's even more to that. Let me kind of you know, provide a little ammunition for that theory there. Uh, when uh, when Biggie Smalls got killed, all right, it was in L.A. I think it was the Source Awards or one of the awards, but it was an after party in the hills. And fam, you know about these after parties in the hills. We've gone up to them before and stuff. Not all of them, but, you know, I'm sure you've gone to a couple as a, as a young actor. You know, they would always have these parties in the hills. There's some producer going on, whatnot. Puff Daddy wanted to make sure, P. Diddy, excuse me, wanted to make sure, you got me conscious of saying it, Nico. He wanted to make sure that Biggie Smalls was at this after party. It was more important that he go to this after party than anything else. Uh, Biggie Smalls had just had a car accident. His foot was really messed up. He really had a hard time sitting on an airplane. He wasn't going to go. But Clive Davis, who was uh, P. Diddy's backer, who gave him and started the whole Bad Boy label, and there's a crazy story behind that, uh, 
he had had set up for Biggie Smalls to go to London the very next day after that th- after that party. Didn't even want him going to the party. In fact, uh, you know, Biggie Smalls didn't want to go to L.A. then go from all the way back to London. Clive Davis had him set up to meet all this international press and all these other people here. He was going to be the next big thing. They were going to introduce this guy. This is the next big thing, right? Like, you know, Biggie would it was starting to hit his stride. Like, forget about it. He's going to be one of the biggest things out there. Diddy was so pissed off and said, no, no, no. He was, call- he was calling Clive Davis executives. He was letting them know. Biggie Smalls is coming to this after party in L.A., and it's more important than what you got going on. Well, he never made it to that after party because he never made it out of L.A. He was mm. set to fly out at 6 o'clock in the morning the next day to go to London. Clive Davis, the head of the le- record labels, you know what I'm saying? Big-time music mogul had it set up. So there was, it made me think, it, I never, ever, ever questioned at all, and we're going to talk about another thing I never questioned, that Puff Daddy had something to do with Biggie Smalls' death. Maybe not, but he put him out there like a lamb to get slaughtered. He really did. He put him in the worst position possible, and that was all P. Diddy. And the next day, guys, <clears throat> P. Diddy flies to San Diego. Just fly, like, people are like, what the hell is going that's on? Very random, that's he just dies effect. and you're flying to San Diego for, for something that's going on? And it's kind of crazy because we're going to play this next video now. You want to talk about Clive Davis, the man who made P. P. Diddy, right, who signed him to this exec, who, who created Bad Boy for him. That's Clive Davis. And, Big, and P. Diddy had to go over some other guy. His name was Andre. I think it was Andre Harrell, who had, you know, pretty much Andre was Clive Davis's little boy toy growing up. And then all of a sudden, you know, P. Diddy was Harrell's little boy toy. This is all in the movie. You know, it's like, you can see this pattern happening all the time, the well, way they do things. Well, P. Diddy went around uh, Andre to get the label with Clive Davis, and there's been accusations. Watch this video real quickly, guys. Look at who Clive Davis is. Look at the behavior. Clive Davis has always been pointed. People have pointed the finger at accusations when it comes to Whitney Houston. Stuff hey, out Pasta, they don't know. You, know, you know, you can't, at that point in time, because of where Bad Boy was at, I can have a Bad Boy without Diddy if I got Biggie. Yeah, I can't exactly. at that if I at that point I can have a bad boy without Diddy if I got Biggie. But if Biggie's gone, the only person with the network and the connections and the talent scouts and all that in the in the the just the the uh, culture is is Diddy. He's, he's the only one left because you just killed off the the cash cow. So it's almost like he put uh, Clyde Davis in a position where now you got to give me you got to give me everything I want and give me all the power because the cash cow is gone. So, yeah. and, and a lot of sense. people say that, well, you know, P. Diddy was Clive's little boy toy, but, you know, Clive and the music, he can find another boy toy. You don't need to just stick with Diddy. Take a look at this really quickly. See who Clive Davis is, the accusations when it comes to Whitney Houston, the craziness behind that. See how powerful these music moguls are. Diddy is truly a monster and represents everything that's wrong with the music industry. What most people don't know is that Diddy actually had a mentor that molded him into the monster he is today. Most of you should have heard about the powerful music executive Clive Davis and his contribution to hip hop. Clive Davis was behind artists like TLC, Whitney Houston, and Brandy. Back in the 90s, Clive Davis actually signed Diddy to a label deal for Bad Boys after Diddy convinced him that hip hop was going to be the next big mainstream music. The story goes, Diddy was fired from Uptown Records and was looking for a new home for his record company, Bad Boys. This is when Diddy ended up meeting Clive Davis, who decided to fund Diddy's Bad Boy vision, taking Diddy under his wing and mentoring him. After becoming Clive's prodigy, Diddy became the mega hip-hop executive and mogul he is today, reaching heights he wouldn't be able to without a man like Clive Davis behind him. Now, the industry for many years has been talking about this meeting between Diddy and Clive Davis, claiming that Diddy did way more than just show music to Clive. According to many in the industry, it was believed that in the 1994 meeting, Diddy actually got on his knees for Clive Davis and did some extracurriculum activities for him. It is also alleged that Diddy would then end up secretly dating Clive during this time for five years. <laughs> for years, activity. this has remained an unconfirmed industry rumor that no one really had any proof of for the longest. Well, that all changed back in 2013 when Clive Davis himself wrote in his memoir that he was indeed a bi man who was into men and women, openly confessing that he had secretly dated many men within the industry. This, for most, confirmed the rumors that Diddy had to pay a dark price for his success. So, critical activities, man. Yeah, and the next article you can put it up right away. Our boy Suge Knight, right? He confirms it. He says that he walked into a meeting and that it was confirmed by Jimmy Iovine, another music mogul. Put it on up. Jimmy Iovine, 
or Jimmy Iodine? Who, who is Jimmy? Jimmy Iovine. Yeah, Jimmy Iovine. Yeah, Jimmy Iovine. Not yeah, Iovine. Yeah, okay. Another yeah. music. Yeah, you know, like Suge Knight says he claims. And, and listen, this was said the other day. This is like very fresh, right? So Suge Knight isn't doing a 28 year sentence in jail. He has a, a podcast. It's called Collect Calls with Suge Knight. His lawyer, his partner, crazy. Uh, Collect calls him, right? And they have a conversation. They record the conversation, and they use uh, AI to have a Suge Knight talking to the the lawyer and whatnot. It's really it, it's really genius to tell you the truth. But he talks Suge about Knight this don't get his money. going on where he had heard that Clive Davis and Puff Daddy or P Diddy were lovers. Who and him? Can't who and who? <laughs> Puff Clive Daddy Davis and Clive Davis. I mean, if Suge Knight said it, you know that boy gonna stand on business. He ain't lying. <laughs> Suge Knight don't lie. He don't, he don't feel like he got to lie about a damn thing. Like, yeah. so, it's Suge. So, I mean, that's not, that's not all that's a problem. My issue, my thing about Diddy isn't really the focus on him being gay, because, like, I just, we, it was kind of an already understood thing within the hip-hop world that Diddy be getting Diddy. Like, that was already a kind of a, a it's, <laughs> My my line is, on, oh yeah, you're forcing other people, like you're forcing other women to participate in sexual acts, like and threatening them if they don't. Yeah. You are you're you're enlisting these young boys to live with you, um, in your home and literally trying to show them what you're doing, right? And then there's the the fact that so many of these people were like these artists, these hip hop artists, pop artists, record execs, and even politicians apparently were aware of what's going on and just said, yeah, we're going to pretend like that's not happening. Well, they were probably participating in it. They were probably well, getting my, what yeah, they wanted point. to as well. It's a crazy beast that they created. If you look into the stories of David Geffen, Jamie Deluxe, guys, if you put in David Geffen and go to Rockfin, Jamie Deluxe has done a video about David Geffen several times. It was taken down from YouTube. It was taken down from all the other Facebook platforms. But it's up on Rockfin right now. Jamie Deluxe, he's got a little small thing there. You can see the accusation. The behavior is almost identical to what, what P. Diddy did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These guys participate in this thing. They think they're untouchable. They, but you know, it, it's, but it's even, but my pro, it's like that's even higher. That's high still. But even lower than that, there are a bunch of artists, like regular, regular. I mean, regular, regular artists is obviously re relative, but regular artists who don't have the protection of a record, a record executive. Like that's my thing. Is like how many of them were either involved and what happened with Diddy, or they were victims of it and haven't said anything about it. Like in the same way that there were victims of Harvey Weinstein, that never, that some of them, a lot of them never came out. Um, there are even rumors that Harvey Weinstein, yeah, he might've been partial towards women, but he wasn't limited to women, right? So like, that's my thing is like, yo, are we, are they, are we just getting, are they doing that thing where they just throw out Diddy and then pretend like nobody else was involved? That's my issue. Like what they did with Epstein or Ghislaine. Oh, yeah, she's guilty of everything. Okay. But she didn't traffic anybody to anybody. So she tra she's guilty of trafficking, but to nobody. She didn't no, to anybody. I know. I get it. I get mm -hmm. it. Fam, you got anything to say about this? You're kind of hanging out in the rafters, just soaking it on in. Yeah. I mean, I just, a lot of it is hearsay. A lot of it is, you know, in terms of the background, in terms of what is known is the accusations, right? So I just reserve. Oh, what I can say because a lot of it is you know, family deals and facts. Feeling deals and facts, not feelings. We don't know. Unlike Ben Shapiro, who loves to deal in feelings <laughs> and not facts, apparently. <laughs> so Puff song. Daddy, after getting P. Diddy, Sean Combs, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> after getting arrested, not arrested, but his house is, you know, searched and whatnot. And obviously this crazy court case now, this uh, settlement to Cassie. Thirty million dollars less than twenty four hours later. Some people are trying to say that his 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 business has made the decision. I'm like, no, no, no. He was at the top of the chain and he made those decisions. And I'm trying to look for some of the court uh, the, the the filings in court because they keep removing them from online. I can't find them anymore. Uh, that's I just why I brought that article because I have them all together. Gonna, probably won't let them go. That's probably why. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Man, um, hanging out in Miami. He's hanging out down the street from you. Pause and go ask him. I, you know, I ain't going near that <laughs> stuff. No way. Well, he ain't got nothing to do with me. What is going to make me a, a famous cooking star somehow? And then I got to do what I got to do. No, not happening. Um, but he did return to Instagram. He gets out uh, and he's just going along like nothing happens. Go ahead, Jamie. Put it on up. Uh, he returned to Instagram. Sean Diddy Combs returns to Instagram following home raids and lawsuits. And he just what he did was he just put up a little picture of his lovely daughter. 
You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. They go into this. They act like nothing's happening. And and he just put up right there. You can put, play the video. Two of Sean Cuffey Holmes were raided by Homeland Security. It was three, by the way. And armed agents searched his properties in Miami and Los Angeles and New York as part of a human trafficking investigation. So the human trafficking, that's what they're saying. Ex-singer uh, Cassie Ventura sued Combs, the New York adult uh, survivor's law that we talked about. She claimed his physical and sexual abuse for years. He sexually and physically abused her for years. Combs settled the day after the suit was filed. The terms were undisclosed. We found that it was $30 million. $30 million. That's crazy. $30 million. $30 million. Less than 24 hours. Additional accusers then came forward accusing the music mogul of rape and sexual assault. There were people who work for the label who have come out and spoke right now. Combs has denied each of the sexual assault allegations, calling them sickening. During million, her Saturday bro. Night Live. Right. In the word, in the words of uh of uh of old boy from Boondocks with uh, Uncle Ruckus, yeah. that nigga guilty, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Hang that nigga. I got the rope right here. That is a great Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> Thirty million in twenty four hours, bro. They didn't even want to try to argue with him. Quit. They're like, nah, man. Look, you ain't gonna beat this shit. Let's go ahead and you you know what time it is. You know what you did. Go ahead, give her the money. Thirty million dollars, bro. That's that is no small settlement for a case like this. That is no small settlement. Usually they would try to bring that down. To be honest, like, look, man. Hey, real quick, Pasta, I gotta ask Fee, cause I ain't really, we ain't, she's been busy being famous and all well-traveled and all that good stuff. Bro, how about Palestine? Oh, this is completely off topic. To totally off topic, but I'm not gonna be able to talk to you for a minute again. So I, we already here, you know, we already talking. <laughs> By the way, and, and we, we can before because I, I only got I only got yeah. ten minutes left, so I, I just want to know. Like, Here, let me do, let me just do this really quickly and just show you this. This is uh, and we'll wrap this section up, and then you can talk a little bit about that. Um, this is what he put on, just so people know. I mean, it's not that important, but he put on one of his baby girls on Instagram. He returned to Instagram, put some pictures up there. Uh, so that's where he's at. I don't know if that says anything about where his mind is at. <laughs> you know where his head is at right now. But they're going through all these investigations and whatnot. So he returned to Instagram. Uh, they saw, I think him and his other two older daughters uh, were doing something. Uh, I think one of the kids, he has a, he has a child with, with Kim Porter, the one who just died mysteriously. Uh, that was his longtime girlfriend for quite some time. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's going on right now so far with the PDD uh, revelation. Did he turn the comments off? Yeah. He probably turned the comments he turned off. Turned the comments off. He turned the comments off. Comments were off. But... Um, yeah, that's that's what's going on with that situation right now. We're gonna say I'm gonna say keep close to close eye to it. Um, listen, I, I just think it's amazing and it's kind of interesting when you talk about a society where people don't have to play by the rules, that they can do whatever they want to do so bad, where they can use children as currency. Because I think more stuff's gonna come out of this. There's gonna be some people who come forth and talk about what's going on. You know, uh, I, I think there's a lot more to this, but, you know, it, it was like what Alex Christoforo said that one time, fam, and, you know, me, Fiorella disagreed. Um, not wholeheartedly, she didn't brush it off, but, you know, we think this is sometimes one of the biggest issues out there because these are connected to the people who are really calling the shots and running the world. You mentioned something. David Geffen is a Zionist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't mention, but, but that's another guy. And, uh, I mean, these people are, like, chosen, and they're untouchables. And the things they do are disgusting. They're terrible. You know, if anybody's a young artist out there that wants to make it, that has to understand they have to go through these guys. You know, you look at David Geffen. You look yeah, at hop on Ed TikTok, David, stop playing. You look at Puff Daddy, right? You're talking about 30% of the industry right there. Of If you want to have a hip hop art album out there, there's a reason why 50 Cent from New York, friends with, uh, What's his name? Jam Master J, close with a lot of other people. And was, it was and he was close with Biggie. Yeah, and he, where Biggie did died. he go? He went inside with Interscope, uh, with no aftermath, with uh, aftermath, Dr. Yep. Dre on the West Coast. There's a reason because he didn't want to do business with Puff Daddy because he knew what he was about. They were openly beefing. Yeah, yeah. they were openly beefing. Yeah, uh, before 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 Fifty got shot, they were openly beefing. Actually, yeah. Fifty so. said said on a, on a podcast. He tell he said he goes. You know, Puff Daddy says all this weird shit, like, let's go shopping. I'll buy. He's like, why are no, you No, 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 not let's go shopping. No, no, no. I want to take you shopping. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm take you shopping. Let me take He's you shopping. Like, bro. No. <laughs> but that's that. We'll, we'll keep a close eye to that. Uh, I'm going to fill up my coffee. Fam, you guys got anything else to say about this while we, while we put a cherry on top of this uh, section over here? Literally, while we're talking about Puff Daddy, cherry on top. Are you guys good? No, nah, no, nah, I'm good, man. Diddy weird. Moral story. Diddy weird. Well, hey, <laughs> we're going to see who's going to come out of this whole situation. We're going to see if he's going to be protected, continue to doing what he's doing. It's going to be very interesting. 